I have said this before, and I will say it until the cows come crying home, I am blue in the face, or I'm pushing up Daisy six feet under. Kyle Whittingham is the most underappreciated coach in this era of college football that we have ever seen, and there isn't a close second. If you're new here, welcome on into the channel. My name is Cole Thompson. I'm a radio show host based in Houston, Texas, and I talk college football every single day. I talk NFL, MLB, NHL, NBA, but I love talking college football, and if you're a fan of it, this is the channel made for you. So hit the subscribe button, leave a comment down below, tell me who you think is the top coach or the most underappreciated coach in college football. Give a thumbs up, tell your friends, tell your families, tell everyone to subscribe to the channel because if we get to 1,000 subscribers by November 15th, I will shave my head Lex Luthor style live on air. We're going to do three live shows, 30 to 45 minutes. Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Fridays. You're not going to want to miss out. So go ahead and hit that subscribe button and let's talk college football. Kyle Whittingham and Utah marches into Pasadena, California, and they get the massive upset 34-32 win over USC. And this is one of those games where if you were just to tell me, okay, they won this because of they were the better team, I would politely disagree. Look at the quarterback situation. Look at the running back situation. Look at the transfer portal and how many players decided to hitch their wagon to Lincoln Riley this offseason and not Kyle Whittingham. I would say that they were not the more impressive team on paper. But that's a great thing about football. We don't play a game on paper or through stats. We play a game with actual physicality and mentality on the field every single Saturday. And the better team walks away victorious and the better team and the more well-coached team usually pulls out through any stipulation. That's what Kyle Whittingham has done. And this is not new. This is the furthest thing from being new. This has been a constant revelation that has gone on for years and years and years on establishing culture, establishing a standard, and delivering on those expectations without changing them. And that's what Kyle Whittingham has done since he was named the head coach at Utah in favor of Urban Meyer. Every year. Every year. You cannot count out the Utes. And even in games that you expect them to be the underdogs. And they were. They were the underdogs going into this game. Not only because that they had lost just a couple of weeks earlier to Oregon State, but you were wondering, how is this offense going to be able to combat against a high-tempo passing attack led by the Heisman Trophy winner and Caleb Williams? Simple. Culture. And that's been the bread and butter of the Kyle Whittingham coaching tree and the aura of his program for years on end. That's what stands out about Utah, because you can just go ahead and say, well, Utah ran the football better, which they did. They absolutely did. They finished with 177 rushing yards compared to Marshawn Lloyd, who had a touchdown, but in seven carries only averaged 86 yards, only finished with 86 yards. They dismantled the ground game when it came to picking up yards and keeping drives alive. They finished with a fewer passing yards. Not that many, but fewer. One finished with 253. The other one finished with 235. They won on third down. That was the big deal. They actually didn't win on third down. They went, they, they, uh, they won on first down conversions. They got 23 versus 18. They finished with 482 yards of offense compared to USC's 401. They did a great job of utilizing their strengths and they didn't put too much pressure on Bryson Barnes to play hero ball. And now Bryson Barnes is going to lead this team for the remainder of the season. Kyle Whittingham announced after the game that Cam Rising, the quarterback that has won back-to-back Pac-12 titles, out for the year. So best of luck to you. I don't know if you'll be able to get a waiver from the NCAA that will let you come back. And tight end Brayton Cuthy is also out for the year. For most teams, that's a death sentence. When you lose premier talent like Clark Phillips and Dalton Kincaid to the NFL And then you lose your starting quarterback to a torn ACL and your other tight end that was influential on having you be one of the more consistent passing attacks in college football last year. That's usually dead in the water. You can't say that about Utah. And you can't say that about a Utah team led by Kyle Whittingham because in any sense of adversity, this is where he stands. He's number seven all time in active wins in college football. He has 160 wins. He's one behind Mike Gundy at Oklahoma State. Every year, they find their way into the top 10. Every year, they find their way to finish around 9-3 and three or 10-2. and two. Some years, even close to being 11-1. and one. 
And last year, I thought that this was a team that was destined to go to the college football playoff. And they weren't. They weren't. But they were destined to beat up on the team that everyone said was. Everyone picked USC. First year, Caleb Williams, Lincoln Riley, all this high tempo, go, go offense. Stop, stop, stop. That's why I take away when it comes to playing against Utah. You stop yourself and you have to realize we're not going to beat Utah single-handedly. No, we may win the football game, but they're going to give us everything that they have. And by the fourth quarter, it's up to mentality. And you know who has stronger mentality than USC? Utah. And they had it for a while. Kyle Whittingham is the most underappreciated coach in college football because of what he's done throughout his tenure, instigating dynamic success wherever he's been. They were in the Mountain West. Guess what? They made the jump over to the Pac-12. And there were struggles very early on. No one can deny that. Eight and five, five and seven, five and seven. And then in 2015 or 2014, boom, everything started to click. Nine wins, 10 wins, nine wins, nine wins, 11 wins, 10 wins, 10 wins. Top 10 status, top 12 status, top 25, six different times. He doesn't get all the five stars like the USC's and the UCLA's or even the Oregon's of the world. He takes three stars that were second opinion players and debt pieces on the prominent programs and turns them into first round talent. Go ahead and look at how many kids from Salt Lake City have heard their name called by Roger Goodell because it happens every single year. Every year you see somebody just break out, whether it be a Devin Lloyd or a Dalton Kincaid, or you want to go really far back a star Lola Tule, Alex Smith for that matter, number one overall pick. That's what he does. That's what he does. And he's done it forever. And for good reason too. Because if he has belief in the culture, he is buying from the players and he has a standard set. Everybody should be following that standard set by Kyle Whittingham because not many coaches are going to have this type of mentality every year. And not many coaches are going to walk into a building knowing that they're the underdogs, they're down, they're not expected to do anything, they lose a key player, and yet 10-2 and two is still on your horizon. If Kyle Whittingham coached up Florida right now, where'd you have him ranked? Top five? Top four? Maybe you would say, okay, it's Kirby, it's Nick Saban, Kyle Whittingham. Because that's where I think a lot of people would. You put him at Miami, probably same thing. Oklahoma, definitely you put him there. I would say at USC, USC wins the national title at this point. Because of the resources that he would have had, because of the way and the aura and the ambience of playing at a program like USC, the name, the brand, the recognition would have carried weight. But he coaches at Utah. And some people still do not believe that he is a top 10 coach in college football. Some people do not believe that he is the best coach in the Pac-12. I hate to break it to you, folks. For those of you that are still holding out hope that your opinion's right, go ahead, drink the Kool-Aid, and go say hi to the lizard man because of I don't know what else to tell you. This is the standard of the Pac-12. By the way, those of you who are ready to go ahead and crown Deion Sanders, the king of the Big 12 next year, you might be right. I would not be shocked to see Dion in year one, especially if Shadur comes back with him, dismantle teams like Kansas, dethrone a Texas Tech, absolutely thwart and send to the haymaker Oklahoma State. You can't get out of Utah because literally every single year we have this conversation. When's it going to be the reality check that Utah is not going to be 10 and 2? When's it going to be the reality check that Utah is not going to be a contender for the college football playoff? They are, and they're still going to be next season when they're in the Big 12. They have an opportunity to close out the year on a really strong note. They play Oregon this weekend. Then they get a game against Arizona State. Then they get a game against Washington, Arizona, and Colorado. I don't know if they'll go 11-1 and throughout the process. Maybe they go 10-2. and Maybe they go 9-3. and But when you lose your starting quarterback and you realize how limited of a passing attack that you have with Nate Johnson and Bryson Barnes, this should be a sign to you that you should be dead, that your season is kind of at an impasse. This is a retooling year, and it never is for Kyle Whittingham. Go ahead and continue to believe that this is not a top 10 coach in college football. He's closer to the top five than he is outside the top 10. Hey, guys. Thank you so much for watching that video. Don't hit the X button yet. 
Make sure you hit subscribe to keep up with all of our daily content found on Just Saying It and anything else that we post on this channel. Bye.